My name is Innocent Muginga and this is Learnability, an open-ended exploration of our ability and desire to learn, grow and adapt. Let's go! In collaboration with GATHER, an innovation conference within the intersection of tech, science, business, public sector and culture, we will be creating the GATHER series. In that, we will explore digital democracy, virtual love, urban planning, future of work, information age, and so much more. Join us. Welcome, Mark. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. How is your stay in Stockholm so far? Uh, it has been brief. Yeah. I, I, I rolled in from Amsterdam last night okay. and uh, almost didn't make it and uh, crashed at the hotel for a few hours and then realized I was opening, you know, oh, this yeah. thing. Oh, I, yeah. we, I had the first session. Yeah. Uh, How the, was that? Uh, the, the session was great. Yeah. Uh, I was up there with David and another American yeah. uh, journalist. Uh, sorry, not, not more of an author than a journalist, yeah. Yeah. but great, really intelligent guy. And he had a, had a lot of really great, great questions. And he was a big fan of the movie. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Behind the curve. And so it was neat to because I listened to some of his podcasts yeah. and I knew that he knew about it. And so we just had a great conversation and he had a whole bunch of notes and I know yeah. I was bouncing around. He was trying to figure out what he, <laughs> he had so many notes, uh, but I can't use notes because literally, you know, when I go into this, yeah. I don't know what the questions are going to be. Of course. So it was really, I got a piece of it. Some pieces of it we're setting up here, yeah. but it was really interesting conversation. And I've watched the documentary myself cool. uh, behind, beyond the curve. Cool. And uh, it's a pleasure to have this conversation with you. Oh, well, thank you. So, and this conversation, I don't. Uh, we're not here to debate the the shape of the Earth. Um, I believe it's round-ish, a sphere, and you believe it's flat, and we yeah. can leave it at that. That's fine. I'm more interested in. Um, so, <clears throat> our mission here at uh, at Learnability yeah. is to explore ways of learning, so right. unconventional ways of learning, right? And how we can use our information consumption as education, right? So, when it, we come to um, different theories, conspiracy theories is how it's labeled. Yeah. That makes me realize there might be some um, weaknesses in my beliefs and theory of, of uh, us being able to educate ourselves because right. it can take any path. So it's really great having this conversation and hearing sort of um, alternative ways that, that sure. can come to this. Sure. I mean, the internet and high, well, high speed internet and smartphones have changed the way we grab information. Yeah and how we discern it. I mean, uh, if you're a Gen Y or a Gen Z, or how much time do you actually watch the evening news? Most of the people get it from social media, yes. whether Bite it's size. Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. YouTube is the largest television network in the world. Yeah. I mean, there's so much content being generated every day that you will never ever get through it. But there's a lot of it that may or may not be true. Mm. But what, do you, what, what is truth? You know, what do, what do you discern? You know, is the truth sanctioned? media uh, is, you know, is what I, what I call approved conspiracies. And that is, look, we all know there's conspiracies out there. Mm. You know, yeah. it, it's not like we live in a world of deception. People lie all the time. Power corrupts. We know this, you know, it's in every aspect of our life, politics and business and sports and entertainment and even journalism and science. Look, you know, even, even scientists need Porsches too, and they will take the money from time to time to cut corners. But then, but when mainstream media talks about them, they don't actually use the word conspiracy. They use the word scandal, yeah. which I, which I really, I was thinking of this on the plane right over, which is they never use conspiracy. If, if something's, you know, if something corrupt happens, it's usually a scandal, like the Enron scandal. But you know, the big financial thing that happened in the United States, yeah, yeah. or, or you know, the, the 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 housing crisis scandal. But if people die, then it's a tragedy, you know, the nine eleven tragedy. Uh, but we, everything else, though, is a conspiracy. You know, it's, it's really, really interesting. So what's the difference? So when the news comes, you know, the media says, oh, yeah, this is true. <laughs> this, these bad things are true, but these bad things are not. Okay. Well, who, who wouldn't be suspicious? You know, the United States, what I was trying to tell David was, you know, just right now, right now, this mm -hmm. second, uh, you know, most of the Democrats in, in our country believe that Donald Trump was, was elected because of the Russians. Yeah. And the, the Republicans think that Hillary Clinton had a kill list. And nobody, I mean, nobody believes that Jeffrey Epstein, the most 
you know, powerful witness, you know, for, for trial in 20 years. No one believes that he hung himself in that in that jail cell. Mm, mm. Like even the mainstream media didn't buy it. It's like, yeah, whatever. So look, there's conspiracies out there. So uh, what I try to tell people is like, what what is for me? It's like, uh, you know, you got to go with your instinct. Your instincts. Which, yeah, yeah. Which is, I mean, there's a lot of info out there, but what what rings true to you? What resonates true to you? Yeah. I want to get back to that. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting hearing your opinion on this. Yeah. Uh, but let's take it all the way back to start off with. I want sure. to know about Mark K. Sargent before you became this Mark K. Sargent. Okay. That travels around the world okay. talking about flat earth. Yeah. Uh, beforehand, I was, uh, I started my career playing video games for a living. Yeah. Literally uh, for a little software company in Boulder, Colorado. The developer was in Tokyo. Were you a tester of video games then? Uh, I was also, yeah. 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 yeah, I was a tester, but I was initially hired because I won a computer pinball tournament. Okay. You know, I, it was a worldwide tournament, and I, I got I was very, very good at, at it. And That's and, really an alternative career. Yeah, that yeah. is a real. And this was back before, you know, nowadays, you know, you can be hired to play games like as a team. Yeah, you know, South exactly. Korea has yeah, like, yeah. You, you, can, you can be like a big team player. There are people this, investing in these teams as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corporate sponsors, the whole nine yards. Yeah. This is way before that. I was mm -hmm. old school. So I would go to conferences and make games look better than they actually were. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. And then I transitioned over to proprietary software training. So I t went around the United States and a little bit outside the United States and trained people in software for the better part of 20 years. Okay. And this was not light software either. This was like time and attendance software, or otherwise known as timekeeping. And that went really well. So I did that for about 20 years. And somewhere in 2014, the one I was looking through, all sorts of YouTube videos. And again, I had my opinions on all sorts of conspiracies. But then I caught this one. This one caught my eye. I didn't yeah. know anything about it. And I was like, you know, you know what, I'll take a look at it. I hate it, but let me take a look at it. And I try to shoot it down. And that's what everybody does. Let me just uh, stop you there. What got you into, because I don't spend too much time myself yeah. Yeah. Uh, exploring that many conspiracies. Right. What was it that got you to start with that sort of? To, to look like, into yeah, looking just conspiracies into in general? Or? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, conspiracies in general, I mean, I got to remember the United States, we have so, we have oh, the yeah. best conspiracies. Oh, yeah. We go all the way back to, um, I mean, the first big one for us was JFK. And it's a big one. It's a yeah. huge one. I mean, you know, not many people kill their own presidents. Mm. Uh, and that one resonated with me because of the wonderful Oliver Stone movie, uh, JFK, from the early 1990s. Yeah. Even though most people, it's a three hour movie, most people didn't even have to watch. All you have to do is watch Donald Sutherland's 10 minute monologue, and that'll give you the whole thing. Um, I got into that and, you know, I looked into the moon missions and stuff, but remember the internet wasn't up and running yet in our country. Really wasn't until the, the late nineties, early two thousands that things took off. Mm. And then once YouTube fired up in the mid two thousands, that's when everything was changed because then it was really accessible, extremely accessible. And you can and, go so much deeper. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then people would, would make, you know, the, it started expanding. So they made videos on top of videos. And it just got bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And to where I went and I had my opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of until, but the only one I didn't look at was this one. Okay. And then I said, okay, I'll look at it. It was the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> you now, got into it. Yeah, I did now. Yeah, so, now. So how did you fall into it and what path, if you could explain like sort of the path? I fell into it, it in 2014 yeah. when, uh, I was looking, again, I was just looking through YouTube, something new. Mm. I was conspiracy bored. Mm. It's like, mm. I'd seen it, seen it, seen it. Like it was like you went to a video store. It's like, mm. you're thumbing through Netflix. Netflix, Seen yeah. it, seen it, <laughs> seen it, seen it. And there was like this one video, I was like, oh, I don't want to watch it. But you know, eventually you're going to get bored enough. It's like, all right, fine. I got nothing better to do. I'll, maybe I'll do laundry while yeah. I'm watching this. Okay. And I watched a video on uh, on the flights in the Southern Hemisphere by a German guy. Okay. And it went, it, it was really, really interesting. And so I decided to take a look and I thought, okay, interesting, mm -hmm. but I can shoot it down. And so I spent a weekend and I said, I can torch this thing. I can burn, burn flat earth down in, in three days. Yeah. Well, flash forward nine months and I'm still just, I'm banging my head on the keyboard going, okay, why can't I, uh, you know, why can't I prove the, uh, the globe in a court of law anymore? Why can't I do it? And so that's where I made a series of videos and put it out on the internet. And yeah. I said, okay, show me where I'm wrong because I don't think it's this. Show me where I'm wrong. And instead of all the people saying, no, no, you're crazy, you're insane. Of course, in the, in the comment section, you're always gonna get that. But the people that emailed me, the people that called me, the people that showed up at my house, 
because I put out all my contact information. Yeah. Super smart idea. <laughs> um, all those people kept saying, you know, it's not crazy. And it's just, then it started snowballing and it started getting more reinforced to where, you know, I had subject matter experts from just about every profession you could think of coming to me unsolicited saying, yeah, yeah, we can't prove it either. And here's why. And, you know, they gave me all the tech and all the, the tools I needed and it just got bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden, then more, then the YouTube channel started fi firing off okay. to where more people started making the, the YouTube channels went around this talk of mm. topic really, really blossomed. Mm -hmm. And our numbers were tracking extremely high um, before YouTube. Like a quick example, before YouTube destroyed the, the scoring system, they literally ripped it down. And I think it was no small part because of us, because okay. they hated. Even though we made them a lot of money, mm. they hated us. Um, I made a video called um, "Flat Earth Just Past the President of the United States" in popularity. We were at twenty point nine million, and he was at twenty point eight million in terms of you know popularity yeah, rating. Yeah. I mean, well, that's, that's Trump. He's the most talked about president in our in our history. And we were we just passed it six months ahead of what I think thought we were going to pass him as. And so that point, it, it was, it, you know, now now we're just waiting for critical mass to where we've been on just about every media thing you can think of. We were on the cover of Newsweek three months ago. Um, we're on the cover of Popular Science right now in newsstands right now. We've got an eight page spread in there. We've got the cover. Wow. It's like, why would popular science even give us the time of day? I'm excited to looking into that uh, article from Pop Popular Science oh, yeah. and see how yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they write it. Um, you were talking about uh, people getting in touch with you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you ask them, disprove me, please. Yeah, yeah, please shoot it down. And do you have like data of people getting in touch with you? How many are oh unable to prove it and how many are Well, that's able. just it. Well, so the trolls, the great thing about trolls is they always are anonymous. Mm. So, you know, you, no, no trolls. Yeah, we're talking about the actual but the scientists. Actual people. And, uh, yeah. The yeah. actual people. What do you mean, like number of subject matter experts? I or mean, just the, number of people in general? Number of people on the, the either side. So oh, oh most, most, almost every one of the people that emailed me and called me, 95% okay. were, were on my side. Okay. Uh, the, and again, because, which was interesting, because you'd think if they were really passionate about it, they'd shoot it down. Like all the, um, uh, well, here. Oh, I don't have it back with me. Like uh, the, the list of subject matter experts, for example, uh, like from the oh, you have an actual list. Well, I actually yeah, have a, yeah. I actually have a list. Like from the oh, I got, I memorized most of it. Mm. Like from the the army, the navy, the air force, marines, pilots, surveyors, engineers, uh, corporate travel people. They all said the same thing. It's like you know what, this isn't crazy. What was interesting was none of them recanted, and nobody even came against them. You would have thought, especially with army and navy military guys, they're not shy. But you would say, oh yeah, that na you know the the missile system. That's obviously you know. You know, you would think that somebody would do a rebuttal, and they mm. never did. Um, interested, very interested. That was why I was wondering, yeah. and it got me thinking of maybe you wouldn't put the time in to to actually take the effort to write you an email or get in touch. Oh yeah, I don't know. That takes. And remember, socially, it's it's more awkward nowadays for people to, to you know everyone texts and mm. does all this stuff. Very few people call anybody ever, ever, ever. but I, yeah, they, they were motivated enough to call me and put themselves out there. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I had some people that called me and then they chickened out and said, no, I don't want to be on camera. No, I don't want to, I want to be recorded. But like my very first um, subject matter expert was a missile training expert, Sparrow Missile System, United States Navy for 10 years. He was an instructor mm -hmm. in the missile system and not, and just to confirm that it was him, he had a video of him on his helicopter flying to, you know, his ship. Yeah. And then another one, we was in, I don't even think it was legal. He was in the missile training room itself, which was like a gymnasium with missile turrets yeah. on it. And he quietly didn't say anything, wrote my name and flat earth on a cocktail name napkin, showed it to the camera and showed the room and just to confirm because people say, no, he's not real. He's not, and they were all real. Every single one of them was real. Uh, they all had doubts in the globe and they all wanted to talk about it. And it just never ended. And that really helped. That was all of 2015 and, and a big chunk of 2016. And once they were in place, then uh, the masses just started coming. You know, people started building channels. Really interesting. And I'm interested in the history of like the flat earth movement. So now we're sort of, when you joined it, are we in the middle stage? It's, it's four years ago. Oh, no, no. Right? I, was, I, was, I was one of the first. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, but you found it from some sort. But I found so it from somebody history, else. So there were yeah. people that were looking, they were always out there. So there were people looking at it uh, in the history of ever. Yeah. You know, this is not a, a wonderful thing about the topic is I have never talked to somebody and said, oh yeah, flat earth. And person's looking at me, he's like, 
Oh, you thought I didn't know what? Never heard of it. Mm. Everyone's heard of it. Mm. But like, so we would be version, if it was software, we would be version 2.0. Yeah. 1.0 would be everything up until about 2014. Yeah. And then 2014, everything changed. Um, due to, we, we everyone came in mass mm. and it, I mean, it just ramped up really, really quickly. So, I read there were some publications before that, like back in the days. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. sure, sure, sure. I mean, there was always somebody mm. that was that wouldn't let it go. Mm. Always somebody back in the day. But mm. you remember the ancient cosmologies, everybody believed in it at one point. Mm. Every cosmology, why would they? You know, you didn't know anything about geometry or calculus yeah. or quantum mechanics. Yeah. Everybody believed in the flat earth model at some point. I Based mean, on what they see. Yeah, what yeah. they see. Look, the stars move across it. The stars are moving. We're not. What do you think they're going to draw? They all drew the same thing. They all drew, you know, the uh, the snow globe. They all drew this. Can I look? Uh, yeah, close sure, absolutely. Edit? They all drew that. So why would every culture draw that? Well, it's because that's what they observed. Mm. And so it, that's that was flat Earth 1.0. That never went away. Mm. So when we came along, all I did was I'm not going to take credit for the whole thing. I didn't invent flat Earth. Now, did I really, really help with flat Earth 2.0? Yeah, I did. And all I did was I said. Here's how I explain it. Mm. I laid it out, no math, no physics, no engineering, laid it out for everybody and said that that is how I explained it, you know, to, to people. Yeah. And people resonated. It resonated with people because it was easy to understand. You know, I, I basically created the 101 guide. And no, there were there were people that were creating higher level stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they, you know, it was tough to get into. So there's a reason why we have 101 books and 201 books. You know, you don't you don't give freshmen third year books. You start somewhere. You start somewhere, and that's where it came. And so people, so people kind of outgrew me, which was weird. You know, but they still give me credit, which was nice. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh yeah, I read Mark's stuff. You know, you, you've heard this like university people where they say, oh, I used to be in this into this sort of author, oh, yeah. but now I'm into this guy. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, he was fine mm -hmm. for my first year, mm -hmm. which I get a lot of. And it's like, oh yeah, Mark was fine. You know, but they at least give me credit for yeah. it, which is nice. Yeah. But that's how that's how people got into it. Um, it's you know my first videos were made in the beginning of 2015, mm. and everything just kind of blossomed from there. The the YouTube channels that came after that, they had great stuff. Oh my God, they were doing experiments, they were doing activism, they were doing music. You know, all tied to the flat Earth. Mm. I mean, like for example, I didn't even uh, in my videos I didn't even talk about the curvature formula for the Earth. I didn't say, you know, eight inches per mile square. I didn't even talk about it. People like jumped on it right away. People were calling me. In fact, my model in the beginning wasn't even perfectly flat. It was like a roulette table. Okay. It had some waves to it. Mm -hmm. And people were calling me immediately saying, no, man, it's absolutely flat. And I was like, really? And they go, yeah, we have photograph, you know, we shoot long distance photography. And that's, that's, everyone ran to the beach. That was the big test that everybody jumped on. It was like, oh yeah, if the curvature of the earth is this, then eventually something off in the distance should be gone forever. And it's not anymore, not with our cameras. So anyway, sorry, so, I ramble. No, 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 it's, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> great hearing uh, how you got into it, yeah. what it is that you got into as well, because yeah. that's what you're explaining here. Yeah. But to get back maybe to my question or my problem or, or in learn uh, learnability aspect, yeah. how, so as I said, we believe in information consumption. Yes. It could be our education. Yes. And there are different conspiracy theories, but how do we stay on sort of a path that is like what's good productive? Uh, I try. Okay, that's a good answer. That's, and you were talking about your gut feeling. Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. good question. I try to stay. Well, it's the same thing with just people in general, and that is, I avoid negative people if I can. You know, there, there's certain people that kind of you know have that cloud around them. There's like, oh, it's dark and just you know everything's horrible, and you know we should overthrow the government, burn it all down. It's like, Okay, those people I avoid, but the same thing with sort of conspiracies. I avoid the really dark ones. Mm -hmm. I know there's dark ones out there, mm -hmm. but I try to make them less dark, which is I try to tell people, you know, when they when they come to me and they say, oh, have you heard about this conspiracy? You know, it's all got these you know, sinister, sinister aspects to it. I say, look at it differently. Try to try to look at a you know, glass half full mm -hmm. rather than glass half empty. And that is yeah, we all know there's conspiracies out there. We know that. I mean, people do terrible things or they do things we don't understand. Yeah. Or they take liberties where, you know, they don't they don't ask the general public for a vote in a lot of things, especially in war. Mm. You know, war wars are done for various reasons. We sacrifice troops for various reasons. Yeah. Um, but do what I, what I try to tell people is, yeah, part of it's your gut and part of it is does the ends justify the means? And that is controversial in itself, but at the same time, does the greater good benefit from it? And sometimes you have to make the tough decisions. And so when I look at conspiracies, that's how I like weigh them. Okay. 
it, and you believe in this case that it does? Yes, I, I will. Yeah, I, with, well, with this, absolutely. And that is the ends justify the means, which is like if, if this thing isn't a real thing until 1960, if we didn't even know, we, even our best and brightest didn't figure this out till almost 1960, do you tell the general public right then, right now? Do you, do you tell them? No, you don't. You can't. And, and the knee-jerk reaction is tell. It's like, oh, information should be free. We should, everyone should be completely transparent. Transparency, what I like to say is transparency is great until the day that it isn't. Everyone talks about transparency, but everyone's got a personal thing. It's like, come on, some things are better left unsaid. We've all done it with our friends. It's like, yeah, don't, don't tell Bob what we just did. You know, mm. you know, we, we keep things from people we care about. And in this case, they looked at this and said, all right, what would happen? You know, you're hypothetical yeah, between yeah, me and yeah, you. Yeah. What would happen if all of a sudden you told people in 1960 what, what this world really is? Well, potentially chaos, potentially. And that is uh, academically, astrophysics and astronomy shuts down tomorrow. And then the remaining physical sciences, uh, hydrology, hydro uh, biology, archaeology, those have to be retooled from the ground up. World markets would have to be suspended for months because you don't know what this means to world markets. And then finally, the religious side of things, mm -hmm. which is if all of a sudden you give the big five religious houses of the world, uh, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity, you give them information that says, oh yeah, by the way, the institution of science has got a big problem. What do you think they're gonna do with it? Double down. And... No, yeah, yeah, they, they will not let it rest. Mm -hmm. And so between those three things, I just rattled off, that's a short meeting, which is, you know, you don't tell people. You no. wait until you can figure out a way to tell the population, mm -hmm. which I think is now. I said we wouldn't get too uh, deep into this, but I'm yeah. interested in, yeah, yeah. like, you were talking about America. There's a lot of conspiracies in America. Oh, we got the best ones. Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking, wouldn't this take collaborations worldwide? Like yes. Stockholm, yes, it would. Sweden, and why would No, it? no, no, not at the highest level, no. This isn't like, like for example, in the United States, we had um, the Manhattan Project, which was the, the, the building of the, our first atomic weapons. Yeah which was you, you the re, uranium refinement facilities were scattered you know in different parts of the country and everything was compartmentalized and nobody knew anything mm. they kind of knew but remember compartmentalized you don't know definitely don't have the, the whole the picture. picture so if that's the you know if that's the case this isn't that this is so big that you re, it's really a need to know basics meaning the less you know the less people that know the better <laughs> And that's what we were looking at. Uh, when I looked at this thing, it's like, like for example, people at NASA, because some people said, well, every scientist would have to know and every astronomer and every astrophysicist and every pilot. It's like, no, none of those people have to know. I'm, I'm thinking like there isn't only not NASA, there is- Oh, the other space agencies? Yeah, yeah. Yes, at the highest, but only at the highest level. So 99% of the people involved in those agencies wouldn't need to know anything. Um, like my next door neighbor, when I was in Boulder, Colorado, was a guy named Wayne Ottinger. He was like the garage mechanic for NASA. I mean, not kidding. He knew all the astronauts on a first name basis. He was absolutely built the LEM that supposedly landed on the moon. He knew nothing about anything. You can pay guys to turn wrenches, build rockets, send rockets up. They're not going anywhere, but they create a lot of jobs and every some things get done. The only guys that need to know are the telemetry guys, the data, the information guys, mm -hmm. because once it goes out of visual range, all you have is the data. Once you control that, you can say whatever you want and generate computer models to correspond with it. So then I'm getting at like, um, communication within different organizations and yes. different because we get back what we what happens is we often come back to uh, similar solutions so collaborations yeah. communications in, yeah. in creating a greater good yeah and so, so what this would take is more collaboration some but again it, you, some collaboration but at the highest levels we're talking about very few people by comparison mm -hmm. um, the same sort of thing with um, Antarctica which is, you know, sealing, you know, people say, well, th this would be a, a perfect example. And that is all nations agreed simultaneously to not do anything in Antarctica, corporate wise. There's very few people down there, even though there's resources to, to power the whole world. So why not? That's a why, why, you know, why, why not to, like, exploit that? And every nation, it's like, you know, if you started a country tomorrow, there would be a, a form that you would be gone. It's mm. like, you have to sign this. What does it say? You can't go to Antarctica. And you'd ask, well, how long? Ever. Mm. And the question would kind of be like, what do you mean? Ever? Why? We, we when did you uh, it, agree it, on this? Yeah. And so yeah. there is there is some collaboration, but not a lot of people. In fact, if it was me, mm. I would tell very, very few people. Like, for example, um, the astronauts. And there's only like, I suppose, like 500 that have ever been to space. 
do you tell the astronauts nowadays? No, you do not. Did I think they told, tell the Apollo astronauts, the Americans? Yes, I do. I think that they were saying, oh, yeah, you know, because they didn't know any better. We kind of work along as we're, you know, we, we fall as we go. And I think they told them, let's go, OK, you're not actually going up there. Here's why. We show them this. Well, that weighs heavy. Apparently, psychologically, that was too much for them. A lot of them, you know, drank and, and went to reclusion. And so nowadays, I think they're just Air Force employees. They just sign a, a waiver that says, by the way, it's above your pay grade to even you know, ask about it. Compartmentalization. Kind of like spies. Spies would be a, a perfect example. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, a spy and goes off and uh, shoots someone, assassinates them, right? Well, he doesn't know all the intrigue involved. But he's saying, oh, he's going to be at this point this in this day. Yeah. You're going to shoot him through a window. And that's all you, you know, you don't get to ask why. You just get to know that you're you're doing this. You're doing your job. Yeah. Okay, so if we get back to sort of what we can uh, do or solve, yeah. let's step out of flat Earth and take another conspiracy sure. theory. You sure. were talking about not be the the darker ones. Yeah, the darker ones. Yeah. So let's say I'm here telling everyone to consume more information, be in control of your education, right. self education, and how do we? avoid that person or what can we set in in it's it's usually just you you'll know i mean people people is as much as we think we've evolved technology the emotions that we pick up the vibes we pick up from other people are pretty apparent nobody wants to be around that guy we all know who they are it's like, oh, man, it's really dark and horrible. <laughs> nobody wants to be around that guy which is fine uh and other people you know have conspiracies i mean it's not that you should avoid them entirely I try to kind of soften the blow, you know, which is like, uh, I'll give you a quick example, 9-11. Okay, 9-11, the bigger conspiracy, right? And then, and, and he would say, well, you know, it's about control and power and all this. And I go, I go, or it could be just, you know, it usually, you know, it's easier than that. I say, you know, um, well, you're, you're from here, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect example. Uh, so you pay, hopefully I'm doing this right, uh, 15 kronas a liter for gas, maybe 15 to 16? Yeah, it's about that. The US pays eight. Yeah. Why? Well, because we have a heck of an influence in the Middle East. Uh, and it's no and it's no shock. We've been fighting over resources ever since we, you know, got to hold sticks and spears. Mm. And that is, uh, if you have resources on your land, it's only a question of time before somebody knocks at your door. And is that a dark conspiracy? Just, it's it's just it is it is a simple reason why you know it's the cost of doing business in the world right now. It, should it be that way? No. Is it you know should people be better? Yes. Which is of course why I do part of what I do. I go this particular um, conspiracy, this model is a message of hope more than anything. I hope how is that? Yeah. Because if this is us, you know, if we are in this enclosed building, if we're in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, then this is all we got, and then we're all in one family. Uh, let's do the, the macro and then the micro. Do you still go to war if you're in the same boat? You know, if you're in this big building, do you mm -hmm. still go to war? Do you still treat it the same? It's not, it's not unlimited anymore. It's the same place. Do you go to a war? Or the bigger one, which is the spirituality side, which is, well, this obviously was built by someone. You know, there's nothing organic about it. So if it was built, that means it was a builder. If there's a builder, Somebody might be looking over your shoulder. You know, something we've always suspected in religion anyway. Well, this is kind of reinforces that a big deal. Do you still do the bad things in your life, like go to war? Do you still commit hate crimes, sex crimes? Uh, do you do, in fact, do you do anything malicious against anyone? Ever again, ever since I've gotten into this, I have sworn, I, I gun to my head, I will never do a, a malicious thing to a single person ever again. I can't. I have to say I like this positive aspect of it. But that's nobody wants to be the villain. And this really changes that. I mean, a perfect example would be the, the music, which, again, find me uh, a conspiracy song about any other conspiracy that's positive, right? We have, there's a track on my channel, or there's a, there's a playlist on my channel that's almost, I think, 270 tracks okay. from different people that have written songs, positive songs about Flat Earth in every aspect. You can think of rock, mm -hmm. rap, folk. Poetry slam, uh, techno, okay. they've all written this stuff because it gets them so pumped up that they're positive. Oh, it's, it's positive, positive and they, and they, they <laughs> want to share it. And not, there isn't a negative song in the bunch. 
oh yeah, they'll pick on NASA. But when we pick on NASA, we're doing it kind of tongue in cheek. Mm. It's like NASA sucks. They're like the other team that, you know, <laughs> we're great. You're we're you. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And that's, it. so, you know, we've and, never, and we, that's what I'm afraid of when it, there, there's different themes. Like that's the fear maybe of, uh, of, you know, when you get to tribal, maybe? Well, but it hasn't, with us, it hasn't happened. With other conspiracies, yes, but with other conspiracies, here's the big difference, there's a lot of loners. You know, the, 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 the tinfoil hat people don't band together very much, which is why this is so unique for us. I mean, I'm, tomorrow I'm going to, I'm flying out to a conference in London, a flat earth conference, and when you get there, oh my God, man, I've never seen anything like it. People. It, the, the acceptance and the energy, it's just this big, I hate to use the term, but it's a big love fest. Everybody's, nobody's, you know, whispering behind terms like, we should burn it all down. Nobody does that. It's all this big, you know, rah, rah, go team thing. You know, Flat Earth is great. And, and you know, how can we get more people into it? And I know that eventually I'm probably going to be labeled as some sort of cult leader. But, but so far, it's been really, I mean, four years. Look, we don't have a Bible. We don't have robes. We don't have chanting. We don't have a compound. It's not you know, we don't, we don't, we don't even ask for money. Mm. It, that was the other thing that throws people. It's like, why are you doing this? You're not even asking for us. Why would we? I go, it's, it's a fun thing to talk to people with. And, and we, it, for a lot of us, the juice is getting someone when the light turns in their head. Mm. Mm. And it's, it's like seeing, you ever seen those drawings where the drawing can be two different things? So it's a woman's face or it's a rabbit. Yes. Right. Yes. And you can't, you don't see it. You don't see, you don't see it. And then you see it. Well, once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's, it's always with you and then you can kind of go back and forth and that's what we run into with people it's like we've seen it with, with youtube channels where they'll people that hate us they'll go against us they'll say i hate it i hate it i hate it and then all of a sudden one day they'll be like hey you know what it's not that bad i like it and then they'll make a series of videos and it's weird they'll even leave the old ones up we can actually track you know usually the, the incubation period is about it sounds kind of alien when i say that I use it in learning. Oh, okay. Well, the incubation period is about two weeks, usually. I've seen women usually respond quicker than men. Um, I've seen uh, the quickest I've seen a woman turn was in 20 minutes. Uh, some people go upwards of a year. I would like to see the research on the other way around if people uh, eventually the, the turn yeah, back. Turn, yeah. Well, oh, well, that's the other thing, by the way. We have a 99% retention rate. That How do you measure that? Because we can't find anybody that actually flips. And I only say 99 because it's probably 99.999. Once you're in, you're in. Because even if you wanted to go back, the arguments that we threw out there were so great that even if you wanted to go back to the... Um, I love your props. Buddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want to go back to the globe, you can't because you spent all that time shooting it down. So if you want... It's kind of like the Matrix line. We use the Matrix as a lot. And you know, the line from the Matrix, like, even if you wanted to go back, would you really want to? Mm -hmm. And so people, well, yeah, people will fall away and kind of won't make as many videos. You know, enthusiasm, you know, varies from person to person, but the, the retention rate's ridiculously high. I mean, it's higher than any known religion or club. And how's that possible? So it's, it's this weird little, it, it's, it's very, very polarizing, meaning you either love it or you hate it. Nobody's on the fence about it. You either, you know, you hate it, you hate it, hate it, and then you're on. It's the, the fence is so thin that very, very few people can be on it. So it's fascinating to watch. Honestly, as far as the social experiment side of things, it's amazing to watch. I mean, we're in uncharted territory every day I do this. I mean, I, again, I was doing street activism in, let's say, Belfast, Dublin, and Cardiff just before I came here. Street activism for Flat Earth. We actually go out with banners, set them up, and hand out leaflets about Flat Earth. How is that even possible? And people don't, want, you know, you think if it was so, so ridiculous, people would just walk by and, and would, would look at it. No, no, they stop and just stun. They just stare and it's like, what am I looking at? What am I looking at? The longer they stare, the worse it gets. I tell people the, the chapter, the first chapter of my new book, which is, is coming out day after tomorrow. Okay. Literally, it's called Look Away. And I, say, and I tell people, I go, it's, it's the line, it, it's kind of part of the line from Men in Black. It's like, look, if you like your life the way it is, if you... If everything is awesome and you know you get a good beat on things, don't look at it. Don't look at it because once you do, you can't. And, I, and I, it's a disclaimer. I, I said, I go, look, there's a point of no return. If you cross that point, you're you're gonna have problems, and and you're you know you're it's gonna cost you some friends. It's gonna cost you some arguments with family. You know, even a, a spouse issue. Um, there was a line that Rob Skiba said, which I loved. Uh, he was a big biblical prophecy guy in the United States, and he said. 
Uh, he, he actually uses a slide in his presentation. He says, April 15th, 2015, the day Mark Sargent ruined my life. <laughs> and, he's, and he gets big cheers when he does it yeah. because, yeah, I, and I have people tell me that all the time. It's like, oh, yeah, thanks for ruining my life, man. Because, and even though I know they don't really mean it, at the same time, you know, it's kind of like thanking Morpheus. It's a paradigm shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, it's, again, so weird to watch, but it's been a wonderful journey so far. So I have one last quest question. Yes that I'm excited to hear your answer to. Okay. What are you eager to hear, uh, learn within the near future? Um, for me, the truth has always come in surprises. Uh, so for, for me, the big thing I would love to know, and it's for everyone that wants this, wants to know is who did it? You know, who's, who's responsible who created, for this? Okay. Where, and, and that's where we kind of think it's going. Where it's like, look, we, you know, we've got high speed internet, social media, and six billion smartphones out there. The infrastructure is ready for whoever. You know, the, there's an old saying, which is once all the students are seated, this, the teacher arrives. Okay. And I love that saying only because it feels kind of like that. You know, I don't think, for example, that this is the end of, of knowledge. You know, it is, I think that, that Flat Earth is just the frame for the campus. You, you can't do it without it. You know, the, the frame opens up your mind to the entire thing, but whatever's on the canvas, that's what we're waiting for. There's something bigger out there. We're all kind of like, it's like, what is it? You know, we're, you're waiting. You can kind of hear the music in the distance, but you don't know what it is. And that's where we're kind of all, you know, it's kind of ethereal in a way where we're looking at it. It's like, okay, there's only a few things. It's like you know, a boxing reference. Uh, Flat Earth is the left jab before the big right hook. I know that it, that was reversed. It's supposed to left Jeff, right? Yeah. And that's what it, that's what it feels like. Um, whatever's bigger than, than flat earth though, there's only a couple things out there. One of them is who, who, and what our place is in it. The big and, question. Yeah. The big question. Why are we here? The, the, the question everybody asks at some point in their life, why are we here? What's the meaning? And we yeah. think we, we get to at least one step closer than that. I think we're exploring the same uh, questions in, in that term. Uh, yeah. What is the meaning? How can we get the most of it and have a fulfilling life? Yeah. And, uh, I, I appreciate you taking your time and sharing well, your you. approach. Thank you very much for this. Thank you very and much. Good luck with everything. All right. Thank you. My thank pleasure. You. Learnability Podcast is produced by Levels, working in the fields of digital transformation, innovation, product development, and venture. If you want to know more about us, visit at wearelevels.com. And oh yeah, if you want to find additional material, and contribute to the platform, you can do that at learnability.online. That's learnability.online. Looking forward to getting in touch with you. And oh yeah, stay curious.